Hi, it's Victoria again. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the difference between the mind and the brain. It's all involved with how we can process information and how we actually can start changing the, our responses to life to get a better uh, uh, handle on how our life's going to go and what kind of things we're going to create with it. You know, so, so many times so many of us get stuck in life. Um, after a trauma because we don't quite know how to move forward from it and we don't know how to heal from it and I am no exception I got stuck for over 15 years and I do not want anyone to have to go through that what I went through um, I learned about a year ago the difference between the mind and the brain to me it was you know the same thing but think of the mind as the part of you that tells the stories the part of you that talks to yourself all the time the part of you that loves connection with another person. And think of the brain as the underlying structure. Now, when you create a memory, you create a memory and write it into the underlying structure. The neural pathway gets formed in the underlying physical structure of the brain. So, to try to heal or to try to change or treat a memory that gets stuck, a trauma, by working on the mind, that's like trying to, um, and I don't have a really good explanation for this, but just think about trying to heal somebody if they're wrapped up in um, a couple quilts and you have to examine them to heal them. There's no way you can do that very easily. So what we do and what I do is I work with the brain. And what I do is I help the mind let go enough so that we can actually fix the physical structure of the brain. Not with brain surgery, um, with uh, the tools that we know since the early 40s and 50s, last, last <laughs> century, and continuing on today in the last four or five years with the neuroscience um, changes in how we perceive how memory is formed. Uh, because we know that memory, especially in subjects like PTSD or other trauma, we know that the memory is bypasses the sensory cortex when it's formed, so it can't make sense of the memory, it just is formed, especially if the trauma is, is significant enough. We just go through our conditioned responses at that point after that. So once the memory is formed, it's almost hardwired into the brain. You can change that. Um, because of the thing called memory uh, label, which is L-A-B-I-L-E, -E, which means that the memory can be made able to be changed by recalling it in a specific way. So that once you recall it, you can actually change your experience of that memory. Now just think, if you could change the memory such that it no longer hurts you, or it no longer felt horrible or you didn't feel guilty or shame or uh, like you had done anything wrong, if you could change those feelings and you no longer felt them, it would change the whole context of that memory for you and therefore help you become unstuck. And that's a simplified layman's term, layman's terms about how memory is formed and, or, and how um, we can actually access the memory and change the experience of the memory. So think, today I'd like you to just think about what would happen if you could let go of the emotional charge from the memories that you play around in your head all the time. Or uh, if you could change the emotional content of uh, an earlier memory so that when you got triggered you didn't respond automatically in a conditioned response with anger back or something that is non-resourceful. So that's it for today. Join me for tomorrow and I will do another one and, and share a little bit more about how memories are formed and how to actually help them heal.